Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a radical equation. So we have x cubed plus 1 is equal to 2 times the cube root of 2x minus 1. And we're going to be solving for real x values. So let's go ahead and cube both sides of this equation. And let's see what happens. If I cube both sides, obviously I'm going to be getting the cube of x cubed plus 1 on the left hand side. So let's go ahead and cube it. I'm going to be cubing the first term and then 3 times the first term squared multiplied by 1 plus 3 times the first term times the 1 squared, which is 1 again, plus 1. And on the right hand side, when you cube the radical, you're going to get what's inside, which is 2x minus 1, but it, it's also going to be multiplied by 2 cubed, which is 8. So we should be getting something like 8 times the quantity, 2x minus 1. Great. Let's go ahead and simplify this and put everything on the same side. I should be getting x to the 9th power plus 3x to the 6th power plus 3x to the 3rd plus 1 is equal to 16x minus 8. And then let's go ahead and combine like terms. Well, we do have an x here, so we're going to have to bring it over here to the left. Uh, we can't really combine them actually because they're all different in powers. But one thing we can do is add 1 plus 8, which is going to give us a 9. All right, great. Well, it's not actually great because this is a nonic equation. And do you want to solve a nonic equation? I don't think so. So we're not going to do it that way. Okay, cool. What are we going to do then? We're going to use a really nice method here, which is substitution. And algebra, you know, has uh, a lot of good problems that you can use uh, substitution for. So how does that work? Well, first of all, in order to make the substitution work better for us, uh, I'm going to be doing something first. So, and that thing is basically dividing both sides by two. And why am I doing that? You're going to notice in a little bit why I'm doing this. Okay. All right. So once I do that, here's what I'd like to do. Well, I got something like, it didn't really change it a whole lot, but what I'd like to do here is set this equal to Y. Now, why am I doing this? You'll find out in a little bit. Okay. Just, just bear with me. Now, when I set this equal to y, I'm actually getting two equations from here. One of them is basically saying that x cubed plus 1 over 2 is equal to y. That's one of my equations. And from here, I can basically isolate x cubed, right? Multiply both sides by 2 and subtract 1. And this should give me x cubed equals 2y minus 1. I hope you don't mind it because I skipped a step there. The second part, the second equation comes from this one. So we do have the equality of two things here and then we can just go ahead and set them equal to each other so we have the cube root of or I could probably write it there but I think it'll it's going to be easier to work with y is equal to the cube root of 2x minus 1. Now notice that we had only one vari variable and then now we went from one variable to two variables. Now why did we do that? Because it's going to make it easier to solve. So we're basically going from an equation to a system. All right, now at this point, you can just go ahead and cube both sides. It makes sense. And when you do, you're going to be getting something like y cubed is equal to the cube. Actually, I'm cubing both sides, right? So y cubed is equal to 2x minus 1. Now, what makes this equation easier to solve when we turn it into a system is this exactly. So you have x cubed in terms of y and y cubed in terms of x. What are we going to do with this? I mean, if you go ahead and back substitute, you're going to get the same thing. So it's not going to help if you directly substitute. Rather, we're going to use something else. And that's called an algebraic manipulation. And that just involves subtraction. So what we're going to do here is we're going to subtract these two equations side by side. And let's see what happens after that. So I'll subtract the left hand side. So that's going to be x cubed minus y cubed. And the right hand side, notice that when you subtract, the negative 1 is going to cancel out because negative 1 minus negative 1 is equal to 0. And 2y minus 2x is what you're going to get from there. And now what I'd like to do is I'd like to put everything on the same side because that will give me a nice equation with 0 on the right hand side. And also, it's going to make factoring easier. Oh, did I say factoring? Absolutely. Now, how do you factor this? Well, we don't have a common factor, but we can group, right? So let's go ahead and group, the, group these terms so that we can factor it. x cubed minus y cubed obviously is going to make a group because it's difference of two cubes. So we can factor it as x minus y multiplied by x squared plus xy plus y squared. What about the second part? Well, naturally, 
uh, what's left over is going to be the second group, which is 2x minus 2y. And obviously, 2 is a common factor, so let's go ahead and use that. Take out a 2, and you should get 2 times the quantity, x minus y, and the whole thing is equal to 0. Sweet. What, I'm, what am I going to do next? Well, notice that x minus y here is a common factor, right? So x minus y, x minus y, which means I can pull it out. In other words, I can factor. So let's take out x minus y, and what do we have inside? x squared plus xy plus y squared, the first factor, and then plus 2 equals 0. Now, you might be thinking about this. Okay, we have two factors, and obviously from zero product property, we're going to set each factor equal to 0 and go from there. The first factor is fairly easy to solve. The second one isn't that easy to solve, but we're going to handle that as well. So what does the first one give us? Well, x minus y is equal to 0 results in what? x equals y or y equals x. But what is y? Okay, why do we have y, right? Okay, great question. So, well, remember at the beginning we replaced something with y and we got our system from there. So we're going to use that now. We're going to back substitute, replace y with this. Or, you don't have to do it that way, you can also replace y with this, right? Which actually makes more sense, because who wants to deal with the radical? Come on, we were just trying to get rid of it, right? So let's go ahead and use the first one, which is uh, y equals x cubed plus 1 over 2. So that's what I'm going to replace y with. So x cubed plus 1 over 2 replaces y, and that happens to equal x. Great. What am I going to do next? Well cross multiply and you know simplify this expression this is going to give me x cubed plus 1 is equal to 2x put everything on the same side you know the story and we get this now you might be thinking wouldn't that be nice if I had an x squared instead of the x cubed because that would be x minus 1 quantity squared is this x minus 1 quantity cubed no not at all but that fact actually helps you solve this problem because if you replace x with 1 notice that the sum of the coefficients for this polynomial is 0 remember I've been telling in different videos that if the sum of the coefficients of a polynomial is 0, then x equals 1 is always a solution. And it's good to know a solution because this is a polynomial and we can definitely reduce the degree. Okay, great. So x equals 1 is a solution. How am I going to find the other solutions? And of course, after I do this, I have to go back and work with the second factor. But the second factor is kind of interesting, so stay tuned. All right, so x equals 1 gives me what? Well. Since this equation has 1 as a root, it means that x minus 1 is a factor, right? It's the factor theorem. So I can factor it, hopefully, such that one of the factors is x minus 1. How can I do that? Well, if I go ahead and write it like this, for example, I'm thinking, can I write it as x cubed minus 1? And definitely x cubed minus 1 is something that's divisible by x minus 1, right? Does that make sense? So x cubed minus 1 contains x minus 1 as a factor. Great. Now what am I going to do next? Well, I have to adjust my expression such that, uh, or in such a way that nothing is changed, right? So I have x cubed minus 1, but I have to have a 2x here, which is minus, so minus 2x. But I had plus 1. Now I have negative 1. So I kind of have to balance it out by adding a 2 because negative 1 plus 2 is positive 1. So that just balances out. And again, we do get an equation that is factorable by grouping. Isn't grouping awesome? So now what we can do is we can just factor out x minus 1. It's going to be multiplied by x squared plus x plus 1. Now, notice that the difference of two cubes, sum of two cubes, super duper important formulas. We need to know them. Okay, the second part is going to have a negative 2 in the front and times the quantity x minus 1. Great. So now we have x minus 1 as a common factor, which allows you, and obviously this is not a surprise, right? Because we knew that x equals 1 is a solution, so x minus 1 has to be a common factor. We knew that beforehand, so let's go ahead and pull that out. If you take out x minus 1, then you should be getting something like x squared plus x plus 1 minus 2. I'm going to write it down, okay, this time. I'm going to show my work, right? So I can get full credit, right? That's what your teachers have, have been telling you. Show your work. Otherwise, you don't get credit. Anyways, I talk too much. Let's continue. X minus 1. Okay, what am I multiplying by? X squared plus X minus 1 is equal to 0. This is where the golden flavor comes in. Isn't that beautiful? Okay, anyways. 
so x minus 1 is equal to 0. Obviously, we already know that, right? I mean, this gives us x equals 1. We know it. Okay, fine. What about the second part? Well, the second part is quadratic, and we can solve it by using the quadratic formula. What does the quadratic formula say us? Well, it says x equals negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 1, minus 4ac, which is plus 4, and that gives us the nice radical, which gives us the golden golden flavor. Okay, anyways, x equals negative 1 plus minus root 5 over 2. That's another solution besides the x equals 1. And the million dollar question is, are there any other solutions? Wow, there's another factor which we have to look at, right? We totally ignored it. We, we actually didn't ignore it, but we were going to save it for the last part. So now we have this. How am I going to solve this equation, right? Well, I think this space is going to be enough, more than enough, to be able to solve this equation because one thing that I'd like you to notice is this is a very special equation. Why? Because there are two variables and it's quadratic and so what? Okay, fine. Well, it doesn't look very easy to solve, right? I mean, are we going to replace y, y with kx? Well, that only works if you have zero on one side, but this time we have a different constant. So that method is not going to work. You don't need any of that. Look at this expression. What does this expression look like? Well, to me, it looks like a perfect square plus something. What do, you, what do I mean by that? Well, if you kind of break it down like this, x squared plus xy plus y squared over 4. And why am I doing that? Because now this expression becomes a perfect square. Wh what? Perfect square? Okay, yeah, exactly. It is x plus y over 2 squared. You see that? It is a perfect square. Perfect. So now what do we have left? Well, I'm supposed to have y squared, so I should need, uh, I, I need to add, did I say I should need? Okay, I need to add 3y squared over 4 to both sides plus the 2. Okay, well, I have to add that here too, of course. And what does that mean? Well, I'm setting this equal to zero, but notice that this is a non-negative quantity. This is a non-negative quantity, and I'm adding two to it. To make matters worse, this is never going to be zero. So, you know, we don't get any real solutions from that. Do we get complex solutions? Yes. Do we want to do it right now? No. We're only interested in real solutions, and here they are, okay? x equals 1, x equals negative 1 plus minus root 5 over 2. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know, like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.